Welcome to another video of Impar Labs video tutorials. In this video, we are going to talk about different kind of partitions, different kind of volumes, and how you can actually manage your disk drives so you could get better performance out of them. To proceed ahead, we we'll right click on my computer, choose Manage, and finally, this box opens up the Computer Management Console. From the hierarchy on the left hand side, choose Disk Management, and here we are. So. As you see here, I have uh, installed five different disk drives which are all unallocated and they have been initialized on my computer. Well, if you um, have disk, drive, disk drives which yet not have been initialized on your computer, as soon as you open the disk management console, there would be a wizard popping up asking you to initialize all the disk drives that you have on your computer. Um, you could actually cancel that easily. Right click on the one of the disks that hasn't yet been initialized and choose initialize disk. Uh, right now I don't have this option here because all of the disk drives, disk drives have been initialized but that's not really a big problem. The wizard would help you go through step by step. Alright, now uh, as you see here I've got only basic disk drives. What is, it, what is a basic disk drive? Basic disk drives are only intended to create primary and extended partitions and logical drives. Well, what is a primary partition first of all? Right click on one of the basic disks that we have, click a new partition and the wizard pops up and choose next and choose prime. See here, we only got extended partition and primary partition options for us to choose. Well, right now we'll choose the primary option uh, uh, partition option and ch click next. Click one and uh, choose 100 of megabytes and click next and automatically automatically there would be an alphabetic. Um, uh, drive letter would be assigned and click next. I'm not going to format it right now because it going to it's going to take a lot of time and click next again and here we are finished. Okay, so a drive E, uh, actually a primary partition has been created here for us. One thing I didn't explain is that what is a primary partition? A primary partition is a partition that is used for from the free disk space that is actually placed on your disk disk space and it could be actually holding um, your operating system so that your computer could boot up from this uh, specific partition but um, one thing that you have to consider is that uh, when you want to install uh, your operating system on a specific partition and you want to boot up your computer from that partition you have to set that partition as an active partition so simply by right click on this partition you could choose mark partition as active and there we go so it's ch uh, and you install your operating system on it and you uh, you would be able to boot your computer um, from the specific um, partition but um, if you're not intending to do um, actually installing your operating system on this partition, I would advise you not to choose this uh, ac active option since if you do this and you don't install uh, an operating system and you don't want to boot up your computer from it, uh, it would be creating a lot of problems. So you better not be doing that. For instance, I've got a C drive here which is uh, 8 gigabyte of um, storage which is, which is holding up 8 gigabyte of storage well when I right click on it the mark partition as active option is disabled since this is holding my um, operating system right now and I've installed my operating system on it um, so this should be as an active partition so that my computer could boot up well so uh, we'll proceed ahead on the unallocated partition of the basic disk. We right click new partition and next. So uh, we chose the primary partition that is finished and we would choose the extended partition option. So click next. I would choose 400 for instance and click finish. Okay. So as you see here, I've created an extended partition with 400 megabytes of free space on it. But yet another thing to uh, look out is that I haven't any other or additional drives here created for me so what's the point of creating an extended partition well an extended partition is a partition that um, would be holding logical drives within it and um, 
it's a partition that you can actually be creating logical and separated and also independent dust volumes that could be actually treated as um, physical and independent um, disk drives. So I'll proceed ahead. I'll, I right click on the extended partition, choose new logical drive, um, click next. As you see here, I'm not able to create a primary partition within an extended partition, and I'm not create I'm not I'm not able to create an extended partition within an extended partition. So I would choose a logical drive. Here we have got a short description which talks about which uh, explains what is a logical drive. A logical drive is a volume you create an ex within an extended partition on a master boot record basic disk. All right, click next. I'll choose thirty and drive F so I click next I'm not going to be formatting it and click finish okay as you see within the extended partition uh, within a second or so I'm going to be having yes here it is the F drive the F logical drive which um, I could be holding dust uh, volumes separated dust volumes and actually independent ones within them all right we'll proceed ahead to the unallocated part right click on the un allocated part of the basic disk drive choose new partition one thing I again forgot to say is that when you click on the extended partition and you want to create a drive you only have the option to create a new logical drive but when you cr uh, cl right click on the unallocated part of the disk drive um, you only have the new partition so you click new partition click next as you see here since I only am um, only limited to create only and only one extended partition, I won't be able to choose and create a extended partition anymore. And with the unallocated space, I'm not able to be creating logical drives either. So I choose primary partition, click and um, choose 100 again or even 120 to make it different. Next, next, an automatic drive letter. Do not perform it. And next, and finish. Okay, so one other thing is that within basic disks, you're allowed to create a limit of four primary partitions or either three primary partitions and one extended partition. As you see here, I've got one extended partition, two um, uh, primary partitions, and I would be able to create another true primary partitions too. So 110 for instance. Drive edge, do not format, and next, and finished. And here again, I've got another primary partition. Okay, as you see here, uh, the problem is that I'm not allowed to create a new partition here anymore. And what? Why is that? Because I've got already three partitions, primary partitions here placed with an extended partition. But if I didn't have this extended partition, I would be um, still able to create um, another partition, another primary partition here. Okay, so what happens to this 292 megabytes of unallocated space here? I cannot extend my actually primary partitions to use that um, space anymore. So this is where that dynamic disks come in. All right. So this is it for basic disk drives. We're going to leave this alone, this is finished for it, and we are going to proceed ahead for dynamic disk drives.